In this recording, I'm going to show you how you can take a raw analysis that you've done using SQL with Python and turn it into an interactive report that you can share with your coworkers. So say, for example, you are used to working out of Jupyter Notebooks or Google Colab, and you wish that you had a way to actually share that as a dashboard with your coworkers. It's really, really easy to do in Fabian. So that's what we're going to walk through here today. I'll show you first the end result and then we'll walk backwards from there and then we'll kind of take it step by step. So here we just have some, some analysis that I've done. You can see here's a mix of Python and, and SQL and I've turned it into this report. So here we've cleaned this up and now I can share this with my coworkers or clients or whoever um, and they can come in here and start playing around with, uh, with data. So uh, let's say for example, I want to search for Houston. Florida. There we go. So we can we can add filters. It'll filter the data here, and then everything down below. And of course, this these reports can be well since they're powered by SQL and Python. You can do all sorts of like really advanced things. So the question is, how do we go from that analysis to something that looks like this? So let's go back here and let's go through this step by step. So the first thing that I'm doing is I am querying my, my database. So this is just some NBA player data that we have stored in BigQuery. And we're querying a database, um, which is doing a select star. We don't have that much data here. And it's being returned as a Python data frame, data frame one. And the very first thing I'm actually doing is I'm chaining these two SQL queries. So I'm actually, recre I recreate a new SQL query down below here. You can simply go and click on this and, and hit SQL here to add a new cell. And I am querying data frame one. So I'm not actually querying the raw database. I'm querying data frame, which uh, is helpful for a number of reasons. But the big reason that we're talking about this today is because I can actually then create filters. I can filter that data frame as I would any other table using SQL, but I can dynamically pass variables from the data frame above. So here, for example, we want to create, let's go back here real quick. We want to create a table uh, where you could filter on the player's college, for example. So again, just to kind of show you here, I have 390 records, and now I want to go and filter on all players, regardless of their school. I just hit resubmit, and I have my 12,000 records. And I don't obviously want to go through and like manually type all these, these values. That would be, that'd be crazy. So what we're doing here is we're creating, we're using these curly brackets here in SQL to indicate that we're creating a, a dynamic variable. And I went ahead and created this input variable called players college. The way you do that is simply you go just above, you hit insert new cell, select filters and inputs, and then you can pick whatever you want. And in this case, for the players college and the players country, I am just gonna go ahead and hit edit here, just what you would see. I just selected the pick list. And there's a few options that, that are important here. So the first is the input name is simply the variable name that you're, that you're going to be using in SQL or Python for that matter, which I'll show you in a second. The description is what the end user will actually see. So again, going back to our report here, you'll see here it says like players college. So that's the description. The default will be dynamic as a type. You can say static. So you could like literally go and manually type in the, you could type in the values if you want. But again, I don't want to go and type like every single college that a basketball player has graduated from. So I'm selecting dynamic. And what that's going to do is it's going to let me pick a data frame above in my sequence, data frame one, and a field, college. And it will then go and select all the distinct values from that field. Now, you can also select, you can also choose to show multiple options or single options. So the difference here is if it's multi-select, I can go and pick a number of different colleges like this. If it were single select, then I would only be able to pick a single one. So that's how you create a, that's how you create like a filter or as a matter of fact, an input in SQL. And you can do the same thing in Python. So down here, for example, I created this, this chart that just shows average points per game versus average offensive rebound percentage by player across all seasons. And I did, let me go back up here actually real quick. There are, sorry. So. If I filter on like any season, we got like some crazy outliers here, who this is, but um, kind of like a, a crazy outlier. So I basically just said like, let's go and add a filter to remove players that haven't played at least a certain number of seasons. Um, and that's, that's how this gets updated. So the way the AI generates code for me, and it added the filter here on the data frame 
So there's a data frame called filtered player stats. And you can see here, it's simply filtering on the number of seasons that it's computed. And I added this variable called end season. So now this time I'm not using curly brackets because in Python, you don't have to. And I just create the same thing. So I just went above here, said insert new cell, go and filter input, hit number, input your information with a default value. You can even create a range if you want. So have a min and max. And that's how we created this end seasons. So now we just have this variable called end seasons, which can be passed again to SQL or Python with the description and a default value. And now when I update this, go ahead, collapse this, again to show, show you again. If I hit submit here, it will update everything down below. Now, a really nifty thing too is, so in the smart book, just like Jupyter Notebooks, the order does matter. But when you hit submit here, we will intelligently figure out like what to run down below. And you can actually visualize that by going to this workflow. So this is a really helpful view, especially when you are going back to old complex analyses that you've done in the past and you may have forgotten like how you chain everything together. Or if you're looking at someone else's analysis, this is a really, really helpful view. And you can see here, as a matter of fact, I renamed my cells. You can see here that I have the raw data and my two inputs, my player's college and player's country are dynamically being generated from data frame one here. And then they're being reused down in my filter data frame. And then the filter data frame is uh, code is generating, uh, sorry, data frame two, which is then being used in our plotting uh, script along with the, with the end seasons. So you can create all sorts of different inputs and filters using this methodology. Just to maybe show you again one more time here, you can create string inputs, you can create numbers, number ranges, Boolean, true, false, like a toggle, date and date ranges. Um, also pick list, multi pick list, that's what we just showed you with static variables that you kind of manually enter or a uh, dynamic drop down. Once you've done your analysis and you're happy with what you have, it's really as simple as going to publish. You can go move things around. That's what I did here. And you can see here, let me just show you, you can like you know, resize, move things around. You can add descriptors, titles. You can hide certain tables and charts if you want. And then once you're happy with the results, you just hit finish and view report and you'll have the report that we started off with. So that's pretty much it. Really simple and again, really powerful if you are doing advanced data analysis or building uh, insight pipelines and workflows. Really great to put this in the hands of your, um, of your stakeholders. If you like this, definitely follow. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them down below.